Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We start another topical MCQ on chapter 11, which is the last chapter on immunity, and this is the AS biology syllabus in which I am trying to cover the MCQs topic wise. Question number one Some uh, common antibiotics are listed. The action of each antibiotic is described. Rifampicin inhibits RNA polymerase, but I mean, we would also have it 70S ribosomes we would have in our mitochondria. DNA synthesis occurs in the nucleus, but peptidoglycan is only in bacteria. So which of these antibiotics will affect the activity of bacterial cells only? So the answer was four, and that was D. When a person is given a vaccination or immunity to certain pathogens develops, when a person is given a vaccination, Immunity to certain pathogens develops. Which of the effects of vaccine are correct? Production of antibodies to protect against future infections results in artificial active immunity. Yeah, because vaccine is something artificial. You gave it. You gave dead or weakened or attenuated pathogens and stimulation of appropriate lymphocytes. So it's both all three, one, two, and three. What is the first response by the immune system to a pathogen? Ingestion of the pathogen by phagocytes. That's a non-specific response because phagocyte doesn't know, but it knows it's a pathogen, so it's just going to engulf it and destroy it. The following are the responses made by cells of the immune system to a pathogen. Mitosis, bind to infected cell, produce memory cells, secrete antibodies. All four of them. So answer is A, one, two, three, and four. Question five, what occurs when active immunity is artificially induced? Active immunity means when your lymphocytes, so if we give you artificially weakened polio virus, then your lymphocytes will make antibodies. So self antibodies attack non self antigens. Your lymphocytes will make antibodies thinking that it is a live pathogen. But in doing so, memory cells will develop. But then when the real virus enters or the real pathogen enters, then you will already have the memory cells which will convert into plasma cells and produce antibodies and kill the pathogen. And question number six, which statement describes how passive natural immunity is obtained? Natural passive immunity is when the mother passes the ready-made antibodies. She has suffered from diseases, so she passes the antibodies to the baby or to the uh, fetus across the placenta or in breast milk to the baby. So the answer is C, antibodies are passed from mother to developing baby. Then question seven, what describes a non-specific immune response? Non-specific means B and T are all specific. Presentation of antigen on the cell surface of macrophages are all specific. Ingestion of a bacterial cell by a neutrophil. It's not specific, any bacteria will be ingested by the neutrophil. So it's not specific. Then coming to question number eight, what explains why monoclonal antibodies can be used to target cancer cells? The reason is cancer cells will have a different antigen from the normal body cells. So then you can target them, put a little uh, drug with it, and these antibodies will go and lock onto the cancer cell and destroy the cancer cell. Which statement correctly describes lymphocytes? Each B lymphocyte has the ability to make several types of antibody molecules. Some B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes become memory cells. Plasma cells secrete antibodies into the blood plasma. Some T lymphocytes stimulate macrophages to kill infected cells. So, and now this was the one which was wrong because each B lymphocyte has the ability to make several types of antibody molecules. That's wrong. One lymphocyte only makes one type of antibody molecule that is specific to one antigen. Which action is taken by a lymphocyte activated by an antigen? It divides repeatedly to form a clone of genetically identical plasma cells. And then some become plasma and some become memory cells. Question 11, the synthesis of specific antibodies in response to vaccination is an example of which type of immunity? Specific antibodies in response to vaccination Remember in passive immunity, it's ready-made antibodies. In natural immunity, natural active immunity, you get the pathogen, you suffer from the disease, you're sick for 10, 15 days, and then you have developed the plasma B cells and the memory cells. 
but the synthesis of specific antibodies in response to vaccination is example of artificial active immunity then question number 12 the graph shows the volume of air breathed out quickly and with force following a deep breath in for three different people x y and z what is the possible explanation of the difference in the volume of air breathed out by these people shown so you can see there is a difference the volume is on the y axis so the person x has the harder it says the it shows the volume of breathed out quickly with a force following a deep breath in so the person x has the highest volume breathed out then y has also a little less and z is absolutely chungered and has very little volume breathed out what is a possible explanation for the difference in the volume of air breathed out by these so z has to be the person who has lost all the elasticity the elastic walls of the alveoli are lost so that has to be emphysema and chronic bronchitis has to be y and the normal lung function has to be x so sorry this is a question from the gas exchange question 13 which method of gaining immunity can be described as natural active immunity inhaling the chicken pox virus well then you'll suffer from the disease you'll be sick for 10 days and then you'll recover and you'll have natural active immunity natural means it's a natural way you just the virus entered your system and you were sick for 10 15 days you did not go to school you watched the squid games and then you recovered and then you went back to school natural active immunity your lymphocytes performed the activity naturally there is nothing artificial we didn't do anything you just got the virus maybe somebody sneezed so you inhaled the virus you were sick and then after those 10 15 days you recovered and that is called natural active immunity question 14 during a primary immune response the following events occur some b lymphocytes from plasma cells b lymphocytes with a specific cell surface receptor divided repeatedly by mitosis specific antibodies produced t helper cells secrete cytokines t helper cells identify a specific antigen and now in in which order will the events occur now why is the answer c because t helper cells secrete cytokines t helper cells identify a specific pathogen so fifth has to be first and then it has to be fourth then two b lymphocytes in the cells are divided repeatedly by mitosis then one some b lymphocytes form plasma cells and then specific antibodies produced so 54213 then which statement concerning the defense in the body against infectious diseases is not correct so now you have to read the ones which are correct and find out okay this is correct why is this correct why is this wrong so this is a very long uh, you know english lesson more of an english lesson so you have to read all four of them and the answer to this is a is not correct antibodies against specific antigens are produced by plasma cells in passive immunity passive immunity we give ready made antibodies but the protection is short lived as no memory cells are produced so this was all rubbish because plasma cells are produced in natural active immunity not in passive immunity then 16 an anti serum to a snake toxin can be obtained by injecting the toxin into a horse the anti serum is made from blood plasma taken from the horse a few weeks later the anti serum is injected into a person who is bitten by the same species of snake what type of immunity occurs as a result of using this anti serum so if it is if we are injecting antibodies then it has to be passive immunity and because it is something which we are doing artificially so it has to be artificial passive natural passive is mother to the fetus or mother to the infant in breast milk question 17 newborn babies have natural passive immunity which is the correct explanation for this immunity is not inherited and antibodies are ultimately broken down so it's very short lived which is a correct description of different types of immunity 
again we've done this in a previous video as well natural passive i would look at the natural passive and i would say okay well, that i know is across the placenta so here it's only one situation and the answer would be b the world health organization has a target to eradicate polio using vaccination by the year 2000 however cases are still being reported in some parts of the world after this date what explains these cases of new cases of polio some parts of the country are difficult to reach because of poor transport or wars yes that is correct there is not enough research to develop more effective vaccines you know well polio is a pretty good vaccine records of vaccinated and unvaccinated people are complete so yes it's one and three a graft tissue such as skin from a different person is usually rejected by the body which statement about a graft rejection is correct the graft is rejected by t lymphocytes because they circulate in the blood can gather at the graft site question 21 to prevent a disease dead bacteria may be injected into the body which type of response is this dead bacteria so it's not natural and dead bacteria may be injected so it has to be what artificial active immunity so it's not natural it's artificial so the answer is b not natural but it is active because the lymphocytes will be asked to will be selection cloning and all that will happen so it is active immunity one is natural active one is artificial active so this is artificial active actually so that's why our natural has been no then the graph shows the primary and secondary response of the immune system to antigens here you have the concentration of antibodies in the plasma here you have weeks after exposure second exposure first or second exposure now when you look at this diagram these are very interesting this thing so the x axis is weeks after first or second exposure to the antigen weeks after first or second exposure to the antigen what are responses x and y now x and y so you see x is starting very early y is starting from the right from the base from the concentration of antibodies from zero so y has to be the secondary response x sorry x has to be the secondary response y has to be the primary response because if you look at another graph which is coming later on you'll understand that so y has to be the primary response so here we have the answer should have been c or d but then secondary response caused by cloning of b lymphocyte formed during the primary response basically you see it is antibody so it can't be t lymphocytes it has to be b lymphocytes so this was wrong and this has to be the primary response you have to figure it out is the primary response starts from zero because that's the first time so primary response has to be y question 24 the graph shows the amount of antibody produced in response to an antigen concentration of antibody in the blood time and days first exposure was on zero day from the graph which statement is correct from the graph which statement is correct memory cells for this antigen are present in the body within 20 days because you see as the second exposure occurs then of course again the uh, response uh, occurs which is called the secondary response 25 why is passive immunity effective uh, for only a short time why because you see the antibodies that you injected they have not been made by the person's lymphocytes so they will be broken down by the they will be uh, considered non self and they'll be broken down by the uh, white blood cells so antibodies are not being made there have been no plasma cells and memory cells so they have been just ready made antibodies have been injected either from the mother to the fetus or artificially we have done it like we do it in the tetanus vaccine so we give you tetanus antibody so if god forbid the bacteria has entered you so it attaches to it and destroys it Question twenty six. What is the first response of the immune system to a pathogen? What is the first response by the immune system to a pathogen? Ingestion of the pathogen by the phagocytes. First response. 
You have to remember that that is the first response. You know, the antibody story is later on. B lymphocyte story is much later on. Now, question number 27, an enzyme hydrolyzes the two heavy polypeptide chains of an antibody molecule. The hydrolysis occurs at the hinge region and breaks the antibody into three fragments. How many of these fragments are able to bind to antigen? Now, how is this answer to? This is what you need to understand. Look at this diagram. These are the heavy chains. These are the light chains. This is the variable region. This is the constant region. So if I break this from here, now I've got three fragments. One is this fragment, one is this fragment, and one is this fragment. So now this is one and this is two. So there are two antigen binding sites. Now let's look at the question again. Enzyme hydrolyzes the two heavy polypeptide chains of an antibody molecule. The hydrolysis occurs at the hen region and breaks the antibody into three fragments. How many of these fragments are able to bind to the antigen? So it's only two. Please understand this question. It's bound to come again. The diagram shows the response to a pathogen by the immune system. P, division, some form, S, some release, R. Which row correctly identifies P, Q, R, and S? P, Q, R, and S. So antigen, B lymphocyte, R is antibody and S is memory cells. Question number 29, what is the difference between B and T lymphocytes in the immune system? B lymphocytes form plasma cells which secrete antibodies into the bloodstream, do not form plasma cells. So the answer is A, the rest of it is all rubbish. Question 30, in an investigation into the immune response, a volunteer was exposed to two different antigens, X and Y. The relative antibody concentration in the blood was measured at regular intervals over 60 days. The graph shows the time when the volunteer was exposed to each antigen. So X was here and second exposure to X and first exposure to Y. Now the graph shows the time when the volunteer was exposed to each antigen and the antibody concentration against the time against time for antigen X and Y. So antigens for antibodies for antigen X, you can see here, this is the red colored graph, which I'm just shading red at the moment. And the Y one was this one, which was the green one. Right? Now, what is the explanation for the results displayed on the graph? Now, please understand the question before you actually read this. The answer to that is C. And why is that the correct answer? Is because memory B lymphocyte specific to antigen X enabled a secondary immune response. This is the secondary immune response to X. Different B lymphocytes were activated from a primary immune response to Y, which was, this was a different antibody. So this was a different one to Y. Because Y was a different antigen and X was a different antigen. So please read these different answers. I'm just leaving these for a little while so that you can read them. You can pause the video here and you can read these and see why these are all wrong. The others were all wrong. But why they are wrong, this is what you have to understand. I'm not going to be there with you in the exam. You've got to figure out what was wrong in A and what was wrong in B and what was wrong in D. They're all wrong. That finishes this video on immunity. Thank you once again. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, leaving all the very interesting comments. And uh, thank you once again.